Hello crafty cuties and welcome to a very exciting video. If you've been with me for a while, you guys know that I don't do a lot of sponsored videos. I don't do a lot of videos with companies that send me free product, but today that's what we're going to do. And I just want to start off with that information so that I can be honest with you guys. And you have probably already seen lots of Arteza videos. So I do promise you that this video is going to be a little bit different than probably some of the videos you've seen if you have seen some of the Arteza videos going around. Um, we're going to do something a lot different. I haven't seen anyone else do this with the paints, but um, I could be wrong, but I think that I am going to be using these products in a different way. And a lot of you know that I'm not an actual like artist. I don't paint. And so I'm going to have a different view on these products. Um, I got the 60 watercolors. I got the 12 metallic gouache paints and they also sent me two huge paper pads which are amazing. Um, and so yeah, like I said, I'm going to have different opinions and I know that a lot of you do junk journals and things like that so I think that you might be interested to see how I create this super fun dyed paper with these products. I am going to get started and go over a few swatches just for those of you who do want to see how the paints perform as a paint. Um, be sure to check out Arteza's YouTube channel for any inspiration on using these products in the way that they were intended. I actually had to do that for the gouache paints. Um, and if you guys are interested in purchasing anything from Arteza, you can use my coupon code down below to save 10% off. And just be sure to check out the description and I'll have all the information there. And enough rambling, let's get into the video. We're gonna start off by looking at the products. So these are the watercolors. You get 60 colors. I liked that there was such a huge range of different colors. Um, like I mentioned, I'm not like an actual painter or artist, so I'm not good at mixing colors. Um, this might not appeal to someone who has been painting for a long time or has a lot of experience. I'm not really sure, but it does seem like a lot of people do like to mix their own colors. Um, but I loved this and I think this would be great again for a beginner or someone who doesn't have a lot of time to be mixing colors. So now I'm going to show you the metallic. This is the gouache. Now I am going to be doing some really quick swatches here. I didn't want to waste too much time because I wanted to get into what I was excited about and what I think a lot of you are going to be excited about who are here on my channel. So I haven't worked with gouache paintings a lot, but as you can see here, I just did really quick swatches. Um, I used dry paper and I used a little bit of water when I was thinning it out. I just wanted to see how these were. I really liked how opaque they were, but if you remember, these are metallics and I thought they were pretty good. They had a pretty good shine, but I didn't think they were super metallic. I still liked the colors, but I just wanted to mention that. Now I'm getting into the watercolors and I wasn't going to swatch all 60 colors right now because again, I mentioned there's so many videos out there that you can see and I think a lot of you that are on my channel are into a lot of the similar products that I am. So I'm going to go through and just swatch a few of my favorite colors. I was kind of getting an idea of what colors I wanted to use for the dyed paper. So you can see here, I just squeezed out some of the watercolor onto my palette. I'm using a little bit of water and I'm just kind of painting little swatches to see how they look. Again, I thought the watercolors had great opacity. I, I like that, but they can also be thinned out. So the colors are really pretty and I really like the color selection. If I had to tell you my favorite products that I received, it would definitely be the watercolors. Um, the gouache metallics were nice, but I really prefer the watercolors over the gouache metallics. So here's just another quick look at the metallics after they had been sitting for a few minutes. Now we're going to get into the project. I have a pan of water. I have a little bit of soap because I was experimenting. I went ahead and squeezed out some of the paints into their own little uh, containers. I added water and now I'm using my little mixer here. I wanted to start out and see if there was any chance of getting a marbled look on the paper and you're gonna see this this kinda starts out as, I'm not gonna say a fail, but it wasn't looking so hot. It wasn't working. 
I was trying to see if I could get a lazy way of doing marbled papers and there might be there might be some different products you can use to put in your waters and whatnot but I just wanted to try it a super lazy way just by squirting out some colors onto the water and I could already tell that the colors weren't going to necessarily stay on top of the water so I I was fine with that and you're gonna see here I'm just I'm gonna get into it and it's gonna work out a lot better in the end but I like experimenting and I know a lot of you guys do too so as you can see again I'm just squeezing out some of those colors and we are starting off using the watercolors by the way and then I just take my paper and push it down into the water now even though this doesn't look like there's any color on here when it dries it did end up showing some of the paints or some of the colors I guess you could say since I realized the marbled idea wasn't really going to work I just wanted to see what we could get by adding the colors I already had mixed up for more of just an overall dyed paper. Now I know that these colors weren't the best for mixing but the color actually ended out coming out really pretty in the end on the final papers. So again I'm just dipping my paper in there. I should have had a little bit bigger um, pan but this is what I had. So you can see that some of the colors really showed up right away but again when they dry you can really see the orange tint and I'm going to show you the final papers in the end. I ended up adding just a little bit more orange to make it a little bit darker because I just wanted to get a darker color on the paper and this was perfect. So you definitely need to make sure that your your water is um, pretty dark and so I'm making sure that there's no spots of like just paint on my paper. Um, I'm just kind of making sure that everything is really mixed in and the soap didn't do too much however I guess it did add a pretty cool effect on the end result but it didn't do anything like initially in the um I was thinking that it might help out like the the marbling but again as you're gonna see in the end the color or the uh end dyed paper ends up so cool so I thought oh, I'll just put the blue in here too <laughs> and so I'm just going to basically be repeating this over and over and then I fold the papers and I lay them over on top of a covered area. I leave my papers out to dry. Now I know a lot of you that are on my channel have also done coffee dyeing and this is literally kind of the same thing. Another idea if you don't want to use a pan like I am, you could make these mixed colors using the watercolor and water. Um, you can just experiment to see how opaque you want your color to be and you can put them in a spray bottle and just spray the papers and that would work out cool but personally I like the effect that you get when you're actually dipping the papers into the water with the mixed colors. I think you get a lot of variety on your paper and um, a lot of interest that you would maybe not see with a spray bottle however you would get a different result with a spray bottle and you know you can experiment and see how you like that as well so I'm just kind of using up the paper now I went on to use the metallic paints I did the same exact thing where I basically just mixed the metallic gouache into a little separate container with water and then I put a couple inches of water into my pan and then I dumped those paints. Now I just had to show you a couple shots of how pretty the metallic uh, paint did look on the water. It's super swirly and pretty and I just loved it. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same exact thing where I dip my paper into the paint. Now these papers did turn out really pretty. Again they weren't super metallic but they had a really nice sheen and for a dyed paper I think it turned out so pretty. I mean you can really see how they are metallic in the water but again when you're just painting straight onto paper I did not think they were super metallic. I just continued dipping my papers in and then laying them over to the side to dry. And you can see there's a purpley color because I did add one more color to the mix. And now I'm going to show you how they turned out. I wanted to show you the final papers. I am super excited and happy with them. I love how they turned out. I was worried for a minute that they might stick together since I am using paints, but because they were so thinned out with the water, they did not. I just laid them out to dry and they dried perfectly. Now I will say that the um, blues that I used, which were the metallic gouache paints, 
Um, they didn't end up looking super metallic. There is a sheen to the paper, I will say. And in some spots where you can see there's thicker paint, um, it is a little bit more metallic, but that's okay. I still like the color, but I just wanted to mention that because I, I like the gouache colors, but I don't think they are very metallic. So I will say as an ending thought on the gouache paints, if you are looking for something super metallic, um, I honestly don't think that the, I'm guessing there are better metallics out there. So you can see here, there is a sheen to it. So they do have a sheen. I just don't think they're the most metallic paints that I've seen. But as far as the watercolors go, if you are planning to use watercolors in a way that I am, or even just for watercoloring on papers, I really like them. I like how they come in the tubes. I like how you can just use as much as you want. And um, I thought that these papers turned out nice. Now, of course, keep in mind, I'm using these paints, you know, in a little bit different way than you would typically see watercolors be used for. However, I do like to use watercolors once in a while in my art journal and my junk journals and things like that. And I am perfectly happy with how they um, work. I like that you can keep them a little bit more opaque or you can water them down. Um, and I thought that the colors mixed really well and easily. So my ending thoughts is that I think these products are good for the price. I think that they're very affordable. I think that they probably are more aimed towards a beginner. Um, and I think that you can get a really good deal, especially using 10% off code that I have down for you down below. Um, and it looks like they have a really big range of different art products. So I hope you liked seeing how I used these paints in a different way. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.